Hello everybody, it's Delilah and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a juicy Q&A and if I can be perfectly honest with you, I'm a little bit uncomfortable. I don't really want to film this video. I was going through your questions as always. I went to Instagram, got you guys to ask me questions and there's, there's a lot of questions about intimacy, about very deep and personal things. Just a little warning, this is not a video that you'll want to watch with your little ones. There will be talk about intimacy. There will be, you know, personal marriage stuff, all kinds of deep topics being discussed today. So if you have little ones watching, I suggest you pause this and watch it at a later date. In the last personal Q&A I did, I asked you if you wanted to see a juicy Q&A because I got quite a few questions that were pretty personal and I thought, you know what? A juicy Q&A might be a better spot to answer those questions and so here we are. That's what I'm doing today. But before I dive right into this, I do need to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with classes of every topic under the sun. You can learn how to grow your online business. You can learn how to improve your photography skills. You could even learn how to grow your plants. I get asked all the time how I keep my plants alive and honestly, I don't know but Skillshare knows. I've been taking Instagram for Business Build an Engaged Community by Taylor McCall. Now, I don't run an Instagram business, but this class has been super helpful in just creating a more engaging community on Instagram. I really wanted to have my Instagram be a place where I don't just share pretty pictures, but a place where we can really truly connect, where I can connect with you better, where you can connect with each other, and we can just create a beautiful community of mothers who you know all share the same interests and can benefit from speaking to one another as a mom i know how hard it is to find time to explore your creativity and even be productive skillshare has classes to help you with that drawing and journaling classes can help you deal with stress and be more mindful and feel more connected but skillshare doesn't just offer online classes they also offer a community of people who are interested in the same things that you or interested in. It's a great place to expand on your hobbies, to do self-care through creativity, and even just to be a part of a community that understands your interests. Now, Skillshare is giving away two months of premium membership to the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description box below. Every time I say click the link, I keep wanting to say clink the link. Comment below if you know what I'm talking about. After those two months are up, it's only about $10 a month. So a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and let's get into these questions. What did you and your husband struggle the most with while dating? Uh, abstinence. I'm gonna be really honest, abstinence. We never really had fights. We, we just get along really, really well. And because we are Christians, we believe in saving ourselves for marriage. So abstinence was really hard. Tips for turning off mom mode and turning on romantic mode. Honestly, I myself need advice on this. So if you have advice on how to switch from mom mode and, and work mode, I, I'm in two different modes all day long. I switch between mom mode and work mode and then romantic mode just seems so far away. So if you have any advice, let me know, let us know. Was it difficult to feel confident naked with your husband? Uh, yes and no. It felt very, very wrong because we had spent our whole lives, you know, covering ourselves up. So it just felt very strange and wrong and new, but exciting. But Zach has always been amazing with just complimenting me and making me feel good and feel confident. And because I know he loves me because he tells me, I, I just have that much more confidence in myself. Do you limit yourself sexually because you're religious? I got a lot of these questions. We do not. That is not what we believe whatsoever. We believe that sex is a God-given gift. I mean, have you ever read Song of Solomon in the Bible? The whole chapter is just talking about sex and how beautiful it is. And it is just such a beautiful, beautiful gift. Uh, so no, we, uh, we do not limit ourselves sexually. Most embarrassing story as a mom. One particular story comes to mind. Actually, it happened twice. But for the, the privacy of my children, I will not say what it is. <laughs> I have to respect their privacy. For people waiting until marriage, what advice do you have for the wedding night? Two things. First, take it slow. Don't rush it, enjoy it. Second, use lube. It will make 
all the difference. How have you dealt with mental postpartum issues, if that's okay to ask? Yes, that's totally okay to ask. This is a, a juicy Q&A, and I feel like these things do really need to be talked about, especially amongst the motherhood community. The first time postpartum was a struggle for a good six to eight months afterwards, especially the first four months was really hard. I have an incredible church community. There were a lot of moms in my life who I had never really spoken to before who stepped out and reached out to me because they knew I was a first time mom. I didn't know what I was doing and they knew I was struggling. So they took the initiative and stepped out and offered advice and encouragement and kindness and it was really, really sweet. That was a huge way that I dealt with it. Also asking for help because I, as a new mom, that was the hardest transition of my life. And I needed help. I needed time alone to help myself process things, to clear my head. I needed space. And the only way I could get that is with help. So family members offered to babysit Eloise every once in a while. Uh, Zach offered to just take her a couple of e evenings. Um, it, it, it helped a lot just to clear my head, even just to go have a hot shower alone, <laughs> to cry and get all my frustration out helped a lot. Because you waited for marriage to have sex, was it weird on your wedding night? Yes, <laughs> it was really weird. It felt very wrong, but it was really exciting. How did pregnancy affect your sex drive? Asking for a friend. Um, the first time around, my sex drive went up. Second time around though, it was bad. Like, probably for a good year, I did not want sex, like ever. Did you ever struggle financially as young parents? Um, as young parents, not really. We've always been pretty smart with our money and just making sure that we don't spend things spend money on things that really aren't necessary. The only time that we've really financially struggled was when we moved. About a year after we were married, we moved from our basement suite into our very first house. And there were a lot of fees that came up that we weren't aware of. And so we thought we had enough money, but we did not. That's the only time in our marriage that we've ever financially struggled. Have you ever secretly wanted to be pregnant with one gender, but then had the other? Yes. I'm hesitant to admit this because I don't ever want my children to think that I didn't want them because that is not at all the case whatsoever. But when I was pregnant with Theodore, I really hoped that he would have been a girl. <laughs> I was hoping for a girl. I felt like it was a girl in the beginning, but by the end I was convinced he was a boy. I was right. I think I was just scared because I didn't know what it was like to have a boy and I thought it would be so different. And in a lot of ways, it has been very different, um, a, a boy versus a girl. But at the same time, there's, there's no difference in love for my child. Like, I, I think that's what I was afraid of. I was afraid that I wouldn't feel connected to him, that I wouldn't love him as I loved Eloise and that was never the case. I did not connect with him as soon as he was born. Um, I didn't feel that instant connection, but the next day when I woke up with him next to me, I just, like, I could have cried tears of joy. It was beautiful, and he has just been the most incredible baby. <laughs> he's been so easygoing, and he's so sweet, and I, I hope we have another boy in the future. What's a frequent argument that pops up between you and your spouse? I don't think we really have any recurring arguments like maybe minor things but it's mostly like zach bugging me or me bugging zach but not like an argument argument if you know what i mean if you got to pick your engagement ring would it be different from the one zach chose yeah <laughs> but the fact that he went out and he picked this for me just makes it that much more special and i would wouldn't replace it for the world yeah it's it's really dirty it needs to be cleaned but i'll show you the wedding band is a rose gold one underneath but the engagement ring itself is white gold and then around the stone there's a little bit of rose gold it's not that i don't like this one but my style is more yellow gold and more simple um, so honestly, I probably would have picked out a cheaper ring than he bought for me. But Zach, if you're watching this, I love it and I will never change it. How does being Canadian seriously affect your YouTubing opportunities? 
Um, so when just filming videos in general, it doesn't really affect anything. I mean, in winter, it's a bit harder because we can't really go outside. We're limited to what we can do, which makes the vlogs a little bit more boring. A lot of the comments I get on my vlogs are, you should go out more, you should go do more stuff. But in winter, you can't, like you just can't. But when it comes to sponsorships and collaborating, that's when it gets tricky. A lot, like vast majority of the companies who want to work with YouTubers are from the US and most of them will only work with people in the US because they only ship to the US or sometimes they will work with Canadians but they won't ship to Canada and so it's like I've made the mistake before of collaborating with a company that I thought was really cool but they didn't ship to Canada and I didn't realize that. Basically brand deals is where it gets really tricky. Biggest spiritual struggle, letting go of control and believing that God's plan is better than my plan. He sees the bigger picture, he knows what's gonna happen, he has a plan for me and my family and my life, but I can't see that, only he can. And so I have to let go and just let him take the lead and that's hard for me thoughts on birth control as a christian this is another one i got a lot we believe in birth control we don't think that it's a bad thing here's the thing if god wants you to have a baby no matter how much birth control you use you're gonna have a baby like he's it's gonna happen god's gonna make it happen i've heard i think it was natalie bennett i was watching one of her videos before and she said that she knew someone who the woman got her tubes tied the man had a vasectomy and they still had a baby. They still got pregnant, or at least that's what I think she said. Sorry, Natalie, if I'm saying that wrong, I'm so sorry if I messed up your story, but the truth still remains. If God wants you to have a baby, you're gonna have a baby. But that doesn't mean to not use your brain. If you don't wanna get pregnant, you need to use some form of birth control. Now, I haven't done my research on like the pill itself. I personally am not on the pill, I used to be. For a variety of reasons but since having children i have decided not to go back on it we've been doing natural family planning just because i don't want my hormones to be messed with i don't want it to affect my my milk supply so i've just chosen to stay off of it for now and i think i think i will for for the rest of of my childbearing years i'm curious do you have friends <laughs> i have never seen anyone in your videos <laughs> I have friends. <laughs> I don't share my friends on social media because most of my friends don't want to be on camera and that's okay. I also just need an area of my life that is not on the internet. You know, I need an area of my life that I don't feel I have to pull up the camera and vlog. And also vlogging with friends, especially friends who hate being on camera, is just so awkward. Um, so yeah, I don't share that part of my life on social media, but yes, I do have friends. I don't have a lot of friends, but I like it that way. I'd rather have a few true friends than a lot of friends that I don't get deep with, you know? Did you guys kiss on the first date? No. <laughs> on the first date, we didn't even hold hands. I had just turned 16, so we were really young and we took it slow. I don't think we kissed until about three months in. We didn't even hold hands for a few dates, so it was, it was slow, which is good. What is the hardest part of sharing your life online? I think just having opinions everywhere all the time. People telling me how we need to live our life, what decisions we need to make for our children, um, what we're doing wrong, what we're doing right. Just, it's hard having opinions being thrown at you constantly, especially when they're hateful opinions. But at the end of the day, I do what's best for my family. Zach does what's best for our family and we love our family and that's all that matters. We're just doing our best and we're doing what we feel is best for us and our family. What is the hottest, cutest thing about your husband? Ah, oh, I love his hair. He hates his hair. I think it's really cute, especially when it's all messy and crazy. I like that bedhead look. He hates it so much though. Um, what? Oh, this might be weird, but I like his back. His back is sexy to me. I don't know, is that weird? Maybe. Overcoming periods of not wanting to have sex with your husband as a Christian woman. I think we all go through this, especially just 
us women have hormones. We've got crazy hormones. And we'll go through phases where we just don't want it, especially during like pregnancy, postpartum, stuff like that. I actually filmed a video a little while back, bringing back intimacy with 10 simple habits. The tips in that video, honestly, were pretty life-changing, marriage-changing. They changed our marriage, <laughs> or at least for myself. Honestly, him, he wants sex all the time. That's a guy thing. But women really need to be intentional about it, and it's not always up to the man. Us women need to be intentional about it as well. And so that, that video shares a few tips of things that I have learned from various sources and life experiences. So if you wanna see that, I'll leave that linked below as well as here or here. As a Christian, are you comfortable being friends with people who aren't Christian? Absolutely. That just because I'm a Christian doesn't mean that I can't be friends with someone who doesn't believe the same thing as me. There's no judgment coming from me. Like I, I love everyone. God calls us to love everyone, to love our brothers and sisters, to be kind. And there is no reason to not love someone who doesn't believe the same thing as me. Um, will we see eye to eye on everything? No, but that doesn't mean um, that I can't be friends with them. Do you drink alcohol to help with stress? No, I very rarely drink alcohol and I only ever drink it for the taste. <laughs> That's it. I really enjoy beer, like a lot, but I will never have more than one just because I don't ever want more than one. You know, like after I have one, I feel kind of just gross and icky and I don't want it anymore. Also, alcohol makes my face really, really red and warm. So if I drink even a few sips of alcohol, my face is just burning. And because I don't drink a lot of alcohol, I'm lightweight. And so even one drink can make me feel a little bit dizzy sometimes. So I don't push it past that. One drink on occasion, when we go for dinner or with friends, that's it. What's your favorite slash cute thing your hubby does that you only notice? He hums constantly, constantly. Um, I guess that's not something that I only notice. That's something everyone notices, but like there's never a moment when he's not humming. <laughs> it's really cute, but not a lot of people see his goofy side. <laughs> he's a goof at heart and not a lot of people see that side of him and I love that side of him. Do you have any tattoos? Yes. Does being a perfectionist interfere with your ability to relax and enjoy your YouTube and Instagram? It does to a certain extent. I really enjoy taking photos, filming videos, editing videos, doing all of that. Like, I really love it. But there are many times when something doesn't turn out the way I had envisioned or it's just not coming together the way I want it to. There's a lot of content that I actually have not shared just because I wasn't happy with it but I'm trying to get over that. I don't know if you can tell or not, but in, in more of my videos, I'm trying to just let the small things go. Like the fact that right now the sun is coming and going and making the lighting in this video crazy. I complain about it every time I do a sit down video, but like seriously, it happens every time. <laughs> Those things can drive me crazy and I can spend hours upon hours trying to edit that out, but I'm just trying to let it go, to let it be more raw and real because honestly, that's what I come to YouTube for. That's what I like to see in on Instagram and in videos. I mean, Instagram, I enjoy making it look beautiful and I enjoy following beautiful accounts. Um, there's such, there's just this artistic side to it that I love. But I also love watching the stories on Instagram which are less put together and curated and more just raw life, you know? And I come to YouTube to watch raw life. So I need to just get over myself and share whatever it is that happens. Period sex, yep. What did you dream about last night? Oh man, I did dream about something. What did I dream about? Oh, I don't remember. I had a very restless sleep last night and I dreamt about something, but I can't remember what it was. I don't often dream about anything. When I'm pregnant, I have a lot of dreams and they're weird, um, but not pregnant, I don't dream about anything. Oh, you know what, the other day, <laughs> Sarah, if you're watching this, I dreamt that our family and your family, you and Kieran and the kids, my kids were there, Zach was there, our parents were there. I don't even know what your parents look like, Sarah, but they were there. And we were all like all together shopping and we had just met each other and we were like going through stores. It was weird, um, but I dreamt about you guys. <laughs> yeah, I normally don't have dreams, but when I do have dreams, they're usually pretty weird. I think that's everything for today's video. I didn't want to answer anything too 
personally sexual. But I hope that satisfied your, uh, your craving for a juicy Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. If you have not subscribed yet, I would love it if you would. Click that subscribe button and click the bell button so you're notified as soon as videos go live. I want you guys to participate in this too. Comment below your most embarrassing moment. I wanna know. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, go ahead and follow me over there. It is Lucky's Life, the same as it is here on YouTube. I share a lot more of our daily lives over there, more in the moment as they're happening stuff. Also, if you wanna be involved in further Q and A's in the future, that's where I always ask the questions. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.